Let's yeah. talk about Poshmark. That's okay. a big, big deal there for Poshmark. We're also watching that stock being purchased by one for one point two billion dollars for by a company, uh, a Korean-based company. And I, I would argue a lot of people have never even heard of before. That that is Naver. Uh, interesting deal here. I think it's uh, almost a play. Poshmark, of course, online resale company, and, and then Naver, more of a content-focused company. Put these two together, maybe they will help uh, just be able to drive more. Sales for Poshmark, but again, big transaction here. And of course, also interesting timing, Julie, which you flagged uh, in our morning meeting this morning, too. Comes before the holiday season. We're interesting to see them make moves. Before out. the holiday season, after Poshmark shares have collapsed, mm -hmm. and then they make this decision to sell instead of holding out for some kind of recovery in sales, some kind of recovery in the stock price. So, indeed, very interesting here. And the price at which this happened, um, $42 was the initial. Mm -hmm. offer price for Poshmark and you see where it is trading now and yet it seems like investors in Naver weren't too happy about this shares in Korean trading fell even as those Poshmark shares are rising on relief that it is getting taken out at this 15% well, they're not premium. making any money Poshmark that's that's the thing they're not expected to achieve profitability right. at the earliest by 2024 well and the question is how's that going to be different underneath of Naver Naver for what they have 28 million monthly users across their Naver cafe platform and they've also kind of added in this live broadcast component to also kind of make it more like a, a micro QVC if you will right. I only say QVC because it's a good Westchester Pennsylvania brand but anyway <laughs> all of us have flashbacks to the home shopping networks of the world and now if you kind of take this to a more grassroots level as neighbors trying to do and perhaps connecting that with Poshmark's 80 million registered users across 90 percent of zip codes in the U.S. All of that to say at a time where you are going to have a lot of those users that are still looking for other platforms to sell their goods, sell anything that they're not wearing within the household and just trying to kind of get that on the platform, get that listed and get some type of income generated from that. It's a question of whether Poshmark still has enough of the net promoter score positivity in order to attract some of those new users and for neighbor to be able to benefit from that over the long term too. Well, if our viewers want to buy my papers right here, just just tap it. Just tap the screen. You can buy my papers. No, I'm just You can totally make that kidding. into an NFT. Yeah, we probably could. All right, we're going to talk to uh, Poshmark uh, founder and CEO Manish Chadra in, in the 10 o'clock hour. Looking forward to catching up with Manish. Again, he found this company in 2011, we've followed their journey uh, pretty much ever since, especially as a public company. Looking forward to catching up with Manish.